countdown. The final 24 hours to execution. Just don't simply get a man and walk him from his cell and execute him. The policy book prescribes a schedule, hour by hour, and even down to minute by minute. But executions don't always go according to the plan. His head caught on fire and his leg caught on fire. The needle was dangling there. It came out. That kind of was a messy deal. From the long walk to the last meal. It won't take it long before all it is is uh, stomach contents on an autopsy report. There are not a lot of people who have the opportunity to actually see someone die. Inside accounts from the men who worked there reveal the last 24 hours on death row. It's routine for us. Death row. On average, condemned inmates spend 15 years here. The time is spent appealing against their sentence. If the appeals fail, the journey to the execution chamber begins here in the judge's office. What first occurs is the order. That sets the date. And then within 10 days, you sign what's called the warrant of execution. Dallas Judge Robert Francis has presided over five death penalty convictions. The warrant of execution authorizes that the person to be executed is supposed to be executed in a certain room, in a certain manner, at a certain date, at a certain time. Each state has a different protocol for execution because it's up to that state's legislature. There are five methods of execution in use today and 14 states allow the prisoner to choose how he will be put to death. Hanging. Today, inmates in Washington state can choose hanging. Since 1776, more people have been executed by hanging than by any other method. The firing squad. Most recently used in Utah in 2010, it's available to prisoners convicted there before 2004. Electrocution. Most executions in the 20th century used the electric chair. It's an option for inmates in Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, and Virginia. Lethal gas. Last used in Arizona in 1999, the gas chamber is still a choice for inmates in Missouri and California. And finally, lethal injection. First used in 1982, most executions in the past two decades have been by lethal injection. It is now the primary method of execution in all 33 death penalty states. execution as a state sanctioned or state approved homicide I remember signing the very first one the first time I did it that was the end of work that day it is a, a strange feeling knowing that signature is required that signature is yours once the death warrant is signed the countdown to execution begins You move the inmate from death row to the death chamber 24 hours before he's executed. Alan Alt conducted five executions as commissioner of corrections in Georgia. Come to the door, Jimmy Street. The policy book prescribes a schedule hour by hour and even down to minute by minute. Go ahead and turn around and put your back towards the door. Everything you did with the inmate, everything you did in the execution chamber, the way you handled witnesses, the way you handled the victim's family. The routine that you went through was exactly the same. Each death penalty state conducts executions according to its own protocol and timeline. From 1967 through 1976, there were no executions in America, while legal challenges to the death penalty were considered. 
In 1977, executions resumed when convicted murderer Gary Gilmore faced a firing squad in Utah. Since then, Texas has conducted more executions than any other state. Their protocol has become a model for many others. Since we do so many executions in Texas, there's somewhat of being experts at it, I guess. Jim Willett was warden of Huntsville Prison, where all Texas death sentences are carried out. He oversaw 89 executions in three years there. Well, I don't know if you'd call it an executioner's school, but you've got these states out there that may not have done an execution in 10 years, and so they'll come here to see how we do it. Prior to leaving death row and getting on the van to come to the death house, the inmate would be searched really well. Hands up your arms. Wiggle your fingers. Step a little closer. Wiggle your tongue a little bit. You'd want to search the inmate and make sure he doesn't have a weapon so that he uh, couldn't do damage to himself or commit suicide. The bottom line on execution is it's a court order. So anything other than an execution by the state would have not been acceptable per the court order. Terry Green was a member of the Texas execution team at Huntsville Prison. He participated in 102 lethal injections. The execution team was viewed as somewhat an elite unit, primarily because of the uniqueness of the duty, the care and the commitment that had to be brought to that duty. Also known as the tie-down team, it's composed of prison staff. No one is compelled to take part. Everyone that's involved as a volunteer, it just wasn't something that everyone was able to do, was comfortable doing. Our first assignment was to go to death row, bring the inmate back to the death house. In Texas, it's a 45-mile journey from death row at the Polunsky unit to the place of execution in Huntsville, known as the death house. You ready? Step. The drive is the most vulnerable part of the transfer. The transport process was probably the inmate's last chance of escape and probably the best chance he'd ever had to escape, assuming he had outside help. We didn't take it lightly. The three-vehicle convoy varies the route taken to avoid ambush. The atmosphere within the van was solemn. We all knew where we were going and why. It all contributed to the fact that nobody said a whole lot. The precautions work. In Texas, no one has ever escaped during transport to the death house. Once the inmate is escorted into the death house from the transport van, that'll be the last time he'll see the light of day. In the prison kitchens, the inmates' request for a last meal has been received. My name is Brian Price, and I am the death row chef. Brian Price was an inmate in Texas Huntsville Prison. I went to prison in 1989 on a 15-year sentence, and when you arrive in prison, they assign you a job. I was a musician and a photographer, and they told me, well, not any longer, now you're in the kitchen. While working in the Huntsville unit kitchens, Brian prepared 189 last meals. During their last weeks on death row, the inmate would be given a last meal request, which I have here. Imagining what's going through their minds. This is my last meal on this earth. And I would start putting the ingredients together, whatever I was going to need on the day of the execution. I items prepared ahead of time if I could. Each state has its own rules about what a prisoner is allowed to request. In Florida, Inmates can order food with a maximum cost of $40. In Oklahoma, the limit is $15. The death row inmates, they did not have a, a choice of whatever meal they were going to have every day. Here they have a, a choice, something they haven't had probably in two decades. Once the inmates brought into the death house, cell door secured, it's not unsecured, 
again until such time as it's time for the execution to take place. First thing I would see in the majority of them was fear. Fear of that place. That was death house. The prisoner has been transferred from death row to a holding cell in the death house. There are 21 hours to execution. First person they would meet in the death house was me. Reverend Carol Pickett was chaplain at Texas Huntsville Unit. He was involved in 95 executions. First thing I would see in the, the majority of them was fear. Fear of that place. That was death house. The role of the chaplain is to provide comfort to the inmate. His role is to make sure this guy is prepared to die, spiritually. I was to do anything and everything to help him face that last day, whatever it was, writing letters, making phone calls, singing songs, listening, listening, and listening. As night falls, the inmate can sleep if he wishes to. While in the death house, guards will keep a constant watch, ensuring he does not attempt suicide. On the morning of the day of execution, the equipment to be used in the death chamber may need to be tested. Lethal injection is carried out on a specially designed bed, or gurney. Prior to the execution, the staff would go in there to make sure that the straps were in good working order, that the phone to the governor's office was working and it was in communication with the governor's office. The phone is needed because even on the day of execution, the inmate has a slim chance of avoiding death. When you reach the point that you got to the day of execution, the defendant's attorneys are filing more motions and so forth. The lawyers are feverishly trying to do something to get a stay. They're going to be out of the state system, in the federal system. They'll file them directly with the Fifth Circuit Court. Once the Fifth Circuit Court acts, it's very rare that the Supreme Court takes any action beyond that, uh, unless there's some new, novel, uh, worthy issue. Unless an appeal succeeds, in the death house, preparations continue. For an electrocution, both the chair and its electrical components must be tested. <laughs> 